Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video, I'm going to answer the question, what is electrical engineering? So to begin with, electrical engineering is a very large field, so I probably can't make one video that could do it justice of answering these questions. But we'll just take a stab at it and see if we can kind of give a general overview of what this profession is all about. So to begin, when you talk about electrical engineering, you really have to step back and say, well, what is engineering in general before you get into the actual disciplines of engineering? And to answer the question, of what is engineering, you actually have to go back further and say, what is science? And so if you look at science, what scientists do is they try to explain the world around us. So they try to describe why is the world doing what it's doing? Why is this the way it is? And so scientists have come up with a process to answer this. You've probably heard this before, the scientific process. And what they do is they make observations about some phenomena and then they propose an a explanation for that phenomena and then they test that explanation and then if they can test it and prove reliable you know if they look at the data and that it's repeatable then they can make some conclusions and say okay this is the way the world is working this is why it's working the way it is and you can predict what will happen in the future based upon the mathematical models that they come up with for the world but when you really break down what science is they're generating knowledge about how the world works. So they generate this knowledge that benefits uh, mankind, but they stop with the generation of knowledge. They just say, this is the knowledge of how, or here's an explanation of how the world works. So science is broken into different fields depending on kind of the questions that they're trying to answer of, or the explanations that they're trying to find out about how the world works. And so you probably have heard of uh, some of the common fields. So, you know, physics is a, is a very large, large field. It looks at basically the physical world, uh, but it looks at it in different scales. Okay, so it goes all the way down to kind of the atomic, subatomic level, talking about neutrons and electrons and particle physics and uh, uh, stuff like that. It also has, you know, classical mechanics and it also has, you know, thermodynamics. And so these these are the type of things that physicists look at at kind of a low scale level. Uh, chemists, chem the field of chemistry is a science that tries to answer questions about how atoms bond together and how materials are formed and the chemical reactions that occur. There's other science though that looks at kind of life, what we call it life sciences. So things like biology that are trying to look at, you know, how, why do living things exist? How do they grow? How do they, you know, multiply? How do cells do what they do? And so those are the life sciences, namely biology. Then you also have other branches of physics that look at kind of uh, larger scale things such as planets. So uh, the field of looking at, you know, astronomy or cosmology, uh, trying to figure out why the solar system does what it does does. There's also geology, which kind of looks at, you know, the substance that makes up our planets and kind of what material, where these materials came from and why they do what they do. And then there's one of the most interesting or one of, the, yeah, I'd say one of the most interesting is kind of the social sciences, which tries to describe why do humans behave the way that they do? And that is a very difficult question to answer. <laughs> so it feels like social science and psychology are trying to answer that question. But the science is broken down into these various fields and that helps us understand kind of the disciplines within engineering. When you look at what engineering is, engineers take the knowledge that was generated by a scientist and we build systems that benefit society. So that's what we do. The scientists generate the knowledge and of how things work and then they stop there. The engineers come along and they say, thank you for that knowledge. Now I'm gonna take that knowledge and I'm gonna build some system that makes life easier for everybody on planet Earth, okay? So then when you think about like, okay, well, what are various uh, disciplines within engineering and how do you break them up? It really has to do with the type of science that the disciplines draw from, okay? So why don't we do this? Let's go through kind of the main four groups. There's many types of engineering uh, disciplines, but in general, there's four main types and everything else is kind of a derivative of these four main types. So let's start with the, the other main three before we talk about electrical. 
So let's start with civil engineering. So civil engineering pulls uh, knowledge from the science fields of material science and geology, and they build systems that are large public infrastructure projects, uh, such as dams and roads and bridges and airports and things like that. So when we drive down the street, those that's thanks to civil engineers, okay? Uh, mechanical engineering uh, draws from the field of physics about thermodynamics and classical mechanics and basically what they do is they build machines that automate things for us. So everything from uh, automobiles to home appliances to the housings of your cell phone or your smartphone. And so they build the physical things that are in our modern world. <clears throat> Uh, chemical engineering uh, looks at kind of chemical reactions, so obviously they draw from the field of chemistry. And what they try to do is they try to figure out how we can exploit those chemical reactions to provide energy to society. And chemical engineering kind of started mainly with petroleum engineering, where you look at like how can you take oil out of the ground and refine it, make gasoline and use it as fuel. But it's evolved into a, a much broader field where it starts looking at biological uh, reactions. and it's it's, it's doing things now that involve things like looking at alternative forms of energy, using biological and chemical reactions, and also just pharmaceutical design. And then finally we get to electrical engineering. So electrical engineering is the discipline that draws knowledge about the concept of charge at the subatomic level. Okay, so we are all about trying to understand how we can use charge to build systems that benefit society. And so when you talk about charge, you usually talk about the electron, okay? So we've all kind of seen the, the planetary model of, a, of an atom, right? So you have a nucleus and a proton as in the core, and then you have electrons that are rotating or orbiting around that nucleus. Well, one of the things that they discovered about electrons, in addition to it being a thing, right? It, it actually is a, a thing that has mass. It has this, this really amazing property called charge. And so charge basically allows particles to experience a force. So the two types of charges are positive and negative. So if you have a positive charge and a negative charge, they will attract to each other. And if you have a positive and a positive, they will repel, or a negative and a negative, they will repel. So these are forces that actually can be exhibited on a mass without having to touch it. And so this is pretty amazing. We can actually go in and try to figure out ways to actually move the electrons through different materials. And so you look at this and you say, okay, so the whole field of electrical engineering is about moving charge or manipulating charge. The electron is probably the most used one, although there's other forms of moving charge that that we'll talk about in a second. But if you can move this charge or namely move the electron, what can we do with something like this? Why is that a big deal? Well, let's think about this. What can you do with a moving electron? First and foremost, you can create heat. Okay, so we can warm our homes, we can warm our buildings, and we can heat up food and boil water. Now that might not sound very high tech, but think about what we did before we had uh, electric heat. The only way, actually any form of heat, what did you do to get heat, you know, 500 years ago? Well, the only thing you could do is burn something. So you'd have campfires and you'd burn wood and you'd burn coal. Fire was really the only way to get heat. And so this was something that, you know, it's a pretty drastic transformation to go away from having to have a fire inside of your house to not having a fire inside of your house. You get rid of all the smoke and it's a little bit cleaner. Uh, light. So think about this. When we can move electrons, we can move them through different materials that will actually give off light. Again, doesn't sound that high tech, but think about what you had to do for light a thousand years ago. Well, you had the sun, but then as soon as the sun goes down, you can't see anything. And so what did people do? Well, they used fire, right? I mean, you just light a torch. And so we had to have fire to heat our homes and also to light our homes at night. And this is quite smoky, quite smoky. And you just burn, you're burning everything up. Okay. So it wasn't the greatest thing. Light is incredible because if you just take a look around, just walk around wherever you are for five minutes and take a look at how much lighting is present in buildings and even down the streets, it's quite remarkable how much lighting there is. And so it's, this is a massive field, uh, a massive contribution of electrical engineering. Okay, motion. 
Scientists discovered that if you ran an electron through a wire in the presence of a magnetic field, that wire would actually move. So the wire would actually move up. It would have a force on it. And so this is another type of force. And this is unbelievable because if you can do that, if you can run electricity through that and you have a permanent magnet, you can actually cause motion. And this then gave birth to what engineers built called the motor. Okay, so this is the electric motor. And now this is unbelievable because once you can do this, this opens up all sorts of things. We can get motion automatically from electricity. So this starts giving us things like fans that allow you to pump air through buildings so we don't have to have all the windows open uh, to pump cold air in, hot air around everything to heat and cool our buildings, pumps to pump water out, uh, electric cars, of course but also sound. So if we can move things back and forth, we can actually manipulate sound and we can cause sound to propagate. And so this gives rise to the speaker. And so electricity allows us to propagate sound using electricity. Okay, another thing you can do is communicate over long distances. So if I can take a wire and I can send an electron down it, it runs nearly as close to the speed of light, so it's quite fast. I could maybe run a, a metal cable from here to New York City, and then I could communicate with somebody there almost instantaneously by sending patterns of electrons. So if I send a certain pattern of electrons, then they might say, oh, that's the letter A. And if they, I send another pattern, they'd say, oh, that's the letter L. And I can actually use electrons to communicate over long distances through wiring, and that just enables the entire field of telecommunications. So things like the phone network, the internet, this is all based upon moving electrons through wires that are laid throughout the country. Another thing the electrical engineers have done is they started building things called circuitry or circuits, which built electronics and computers, which actually are devices that can respond to different stimulus in the form of charge and react certain ways. And it's very simple. It's such a thing as if there's charge, I'll open a switch, or if there's not charge, I'll close a switch. And just those very simple building blocks allowed you to start building complicated electronic circuits that can do things for us. So we have evolved to a point in our society where we use computers to essentially offload some of our mental capacity. So things like memorizing a lot of stuff, we allow computers to hold all this information that we used to try to hold in our brain. And computers allow us to, to have access to much more information than we could using just simple memory. Computers also allow us to do computations that are much more advanced than we can do uh, with our brains. And so they really augment the experience of being a human uh, in terms of the way that we think about things. If you think about electronics, they're everywhere. So first, I mean, probably everybody has this. If you're watching this video, you're either on a phone or a computer, that's electronics, okay? That's, that's electrons flowing around that do that stuff. The sound that you hear is going into a microphone right here, and that's being converted into electronics. So those are electronics that do all these sort of things. The camera I'm looking in, it takes this optical image, these uh, this wave or these optical images, and it converts it into uh, electrons, and then it sends it to a computer for storage. And so that's all electronics, and that's all computers. Just take a look around and look at how many electronics are in everyday life, and it'll blow your mind. Another one is electromagnetic wave propagation. So engineers and scientists discovered that if you run electrons through a certain shaped piece of metal, it would actually convert that energy from electrons traveling in a wire to electromagnetic waves. And these waves will actually propagate through space or an atmosphere. And so that gave rise to fields such as radio. <laughs> so radio is electric, electromagnetic energy that's propagating through, through air. But it's also gave us things like the data on your phone, so the 4G, 5G. It also gave things like cameras and understanding of how to capture some, some images, so the optics behind that. It also gave rise to fiber optic cables, which allow electromagnetic waves to propagate down uh, optical cables. And so this is a really amazing field, this, this whole notion of taking electrons that are traveling in a wire and actually convert them into something that'll propagate 
propagate, convert the energy into electromagnetic propagation or electromagnetic fields that propagate through space. It turns out that device the, or the shape of the material that the electron goes into where the conversion takes place, that particular shape or the design of that is called an antenna. And it turns out that if that electromagnetic wave doesn't bump into anything, it doesn't bump into a building or atmosphere or air, it will in theory travel forever. And that's why we're able to communicate with early satellites and exploration vehicles, which are f further out than Pluto. Okay. And they're still transmitting information back to earth. They do that through electromagnetic waves. Okay. So that also falls within the field of electrical engineering. Okay. So those are the main parts of electrical engineering, but really there's even more to that, okay? So just a quick highlight of kind of some of the main inventions of electrical engineering. The first was, you know, in the eight, early 1800s, the dynamo. This was where a guy by the name of Faraday came up with this, uh, this invention where you could create electricity using a generator. So it was the same principle as a motor, but in reverse. And that gave rise to starting to have the ability to take motion and create electricity. So we had kind of a stable way of generating electricity and that that then allowed us to start building these systems. So electrical engineering has only been around for a couple hundred years. I mean, they only discovered the electron uh, within that amount of time. So this is relatively new in terms of a field within humanity, which has been around for, you know, 200,000 years. Uh, another thing that came after that was the light bulb. And then that gave rise to motors, which is where you take electricity and motion. Then soon after that came the television, which was still in, you know, the 19... 20s and then came radar and radios so we looked at electronic uh, field propagation then the early computers that weren't even transistor based but then the transistors came out in the 40s the microprocessor processor in the 60s and 70s uh, satellite communication and satellites in the 70s then the internet uh, came out in the 80s and then modern satellite communications in the 90s then fiber optics which allowed us to transmit information even faster than using a wire and then Wi-Fi, which we cannot even live without anymore, and then smartphones, which every single human is walking around with right now, and ultimately space exploration, where we're going to, you know, be able to explore other, you know, other planets. So hopefully in this video, I gave you just a taste of what electrical engineering is. And I think it's pretty clear that electrical engineering is critical to society today. And it's also going to play a very important role going forward. Because one of the things about electrical energy, electricity, it doesn't give off pollution. And so if you can do all these things, if you can find a way to use electricity to do all the things like heat, uh, light, uh, motion, since it doesn't give off uh, pollution, we have a chance to try to kind of get away from some of the, you know, some of the general energy f sources that we use today, like uh, fossil fuels. So now there, that's a definitely a, uh, a hard problem to solve, but it's one that electrical engineers will play a role in in the future. Okay, so that's it for now. Hopefully that helped a little bit explaining the question of what is electrical engineering. See ya.